Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Teaching Tips Tuesday with me, Alex Fabrega. We have a very exciting topic today. We're going to be talking to Linda Furman. She is from the Recorded Recreational Reading for the Blind, or probably not the, just Recorded Recreational Reading for the Blind. How are you doing today, Linda? Good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for coming on to TTT. Thank you for having me come on. Absolutely. So can you tell us a little bit about what RRRB is? <laughs> it's the it's the longest running um, uh, recording for the blind in Arizona that you've never heard of because <laughs> it's been in existence about 50 years, started wow. in the early 70s. It's a it's a 5013C a nonprofit and our services are free to anyone who either is low vision, blind, or has trouble accessing print information for whatever reason, even those are, that are struggling readers. Okay, uh, how'd you get your start? Or not you personally, you probably were not <laughs> volunteering in the 70s, but. No, uh, how did I start? How, how did the organization get it started? Oh, it actually started with one lady out here in, I, I live on the west side of Phoenix, it, it, she was in Sun City and she realized that she had some neighbors who were struggling to read. They, they couldn't read uh, because of their visual problems, vision problems, and she decided that she would start recording for them. So at her kitchen table, she's recording newspaper articles and magazines and books and sending them out. I'm sure back in the 70s, it was uh, big cassette, yeah. cassette tapes, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it grew and uh, more people joined and volunteered and they incorporated in uh, 74, I believe. And it's totally run by volunteers who really want to help. And we're expanding our services. We started out just reading for mostly elderly people. You're going to mention like newspapers and magazines were your big focus for a long time. Right, right. And every once in a while, someone would say, hey, I've got a book that I can't get a hold of at the library or the talking book library. Could you record it for me? And then we call that a single read. And uh, we send that out to the person who asks for it, which is great fun. Oh, it's got to be. So so you've done some <laughs> narration of your, your own so far? Yes, yes. What has been your favorite thing to narrate so far? Oh, so far, the best has been a, a collection of Oz books, The Wizard of Oz, but not the original Wizard of Oz, some of his lesser known books. With okay, lots I didn't know that it was a whole series. Oh, there is, yeah. Hmm. It's got lots of characters and accents and exciting things happening, and it is great fun to narrate <laughs> that. <laughs> So a problem I often have with my students is we're using a service like Bookshare, which is great because at least it gets you those books for free, but all those narration apps are that robot voice, so it does not matter what it is. It's the oh, same no. tone going on and on, and that, oh, while no. very useful, and it is an incredible <laughs> innovation of science and technology or whatever, is really irritating to listen to for long periods at a time, especially for recreational reading, for something you're really trying to get joy and, and an enjoyment out of. So... This is now a service that you're offering, right, to these yes. middle school, high school age kids of getting these these books recorded? Right, especially uh, in your English lit classes when the novels for a lot of kids that are cited that are struggling readers are having trouble with. And of course, if yeah. you're having visual problems, I keep saying visual, but I think I mean vision <laughs> problems, <laughs> yeah. okay, that you you'd really like to hear it. And in your English lit classes, you're going to be talking about character development. Well, it's really hard to listen to a robotic voice and get any sense yeah. of what the character is like. So we record these books. Uh, we can record anything that is requested by a student or by a teacher. And it is a free, totally free service. That, that is my favorite part. That is a lot <laughs> easier to get a district to adopt yes. something that is totally free than it is something that's going to be expensive. So now you are located in Arizona, but Teaching yes. Tips Tuesday goes out internationally. If you got Doesn't requests really... from out of state, oh, how would you feel about that? Oh, I have to see if we can do that. I, I'll check at the, at the okay. studio. I think as long as it isn't overwhelming, I mean, if we're talking about 
you know, it could be. If we send you all of the Lord of the Rings, that would probably be, you know, a pretty intense <laughs> project. Yeah. Oh, but they, that would be wonderful if we could do that. Okay, folks, they're looking for business. So if you if you need, to, you need something <laughs> narrated, we can talk to her. Recorded recreational reading for the blind. I need to get that locked into my mouth. <laughs> That's uh, enough. Right. I have one more question for you, Linda, and that is, what is your favorite part of your job? Oh, definitely the recording. But I look forward to going be. into the studio because the people there are so much fun. Um, and all of us are volunteers. All of us want to be there. And uh, we just have a great time. But we get the work done, too. I mean, it's get the work done. That's important. It's a lot yeah. of work. So but you, you do have a studio. You have like a nice, soundproof, good microphone. We have, yes. We have a, a studio that actually has three booths. And then there's a director sitting on the outside. And then we go into the little booth. We both have the earphones. That's it on. Yeah. <laughs> I do warm ups, theater warm ups in the car on the way there. Oh, you got it. You got it. Can you give us a voice? Can you give us a voice of yours that you think is really solid? A, a voice? <laughs> voice. One of, your, one of your voices that you've done for a character. Oh my goodness. Well, there's a there's a children's book that has a very mean teacher in it, Miss Gorp. <laughs> and she sounds a little bit like um, uh, Margaret Hamilton when she played the Wicked Witch of the West. Okay. She talks about, uh, uh, oh, I don't remember the, the actual words, but she says, sit down and if you don't I'm going to turn you into an apple, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah, that's exactly it. That is infinitely more engaging than sit down or I will turn you into an apple. <laughs> that, is, that is very appreciated. All right, Linda, well, thank you so much for coming on this episode of Teaching Tips Tuesday. This is such a cool initiative that you're part of. Thank you. And I'm hoping that your teachers will think about how they can use us. Uh, I was thinking about whether they could use us if they're teaching something like fact and opinion, could we be reading some things and then stop it and have the kids decide, is this fact or is this opinion? That's just one idea, but. <laughs> more than just books, I guess. And more than books, we wanna be a, a resource for your teachers as well. All right, well, that's great to hear. Uh, thank you again. And thank you so much to the folks at home for watching another episode of Teaching Tips Tuesday. We hope to see you next week.